it out. The future Prime Minister of Britain is on there. All right, guys, I've just been playing around with macOS Macarena Catalina, the latest and greatest macOS there's ever been. Now, this is the first, first build of the beta. So just beware, buyer beware. Do not use this if you have a choice. To get back into Mojave, I had to reset my PRAM because just switching between Catalina and Mojave just didn't work. My Mac wouldn't boot up. Some notes, if you're a Final Cut Proer, just don't use it right now because it does corrupt your libraries. Make sure you don't load up your projects because for some reason every single time I load my project and it saves, it says this document could not be opened so it will corrupt your libraries. So avoid that if possible. Every single time I launched a new library and I tried to reopen it, it said there was an error, so just straight up know that. Second thing to know about it is it no longer supports 32-bit applications. There you go. Sad news. So you've now lost support for 32-bit applications. So if you use things of that nature which have not been updated, you are out of luck. Also, some applications don't even work. For example, Intel Power Gadget doesn't work. Turbo Boost Switcher doesn't work. Parallels doesn't work. However, there are some really cool features, I've got to say, in there. There's that Find My Application, which can allow you to even find your Mac when it's offline. Thieves, beware. And this is the Find My Applications. Two applications become one, Find My Friends and Find My iPhone. Previously, you'd have to log in onto the website and then log in, log in, log in. But now, it just it's logged in straight away on your Mac device. Also, like the podcast app. You can download all your favorite podcasts, play it at 2x speed. It can't skip pauses or uh, adverts, but it's pretty cool that it just works out of the box. TV show app, I didn't really use that one too much because um, you need to have, you need to pay for all the movies and TV shows. Apple Music works even without a paid account, so you can listen to interviews and all that kind of cool stuff. But my favorite feature in uh, macOS Catalina or Catalina is uh, the privacy settings. So now applications need to request access to external drives, network drives, and files on your desktop and files on your computer. So when I launched Photoshop, it was saying, I want to see all the files on your desktop. And I said, no, and Photoshop still worked fine. Final Cut Pro, my favorite, it was asking for accessing the network drive, external drives, and my desktop. And I said no to all three of those options, and it still worked fine. However, the best part about that feature is whenever I plug my camera into my computer, Final Cut Pro always has that import dialog that pops up. You can't disable it. But now if you disable access to external media, it doesn't pop up anymore. So I really like that feature. So I've just turned on my camera and Final Cut Pro is not detected it because I have disallowed it detecting external drives. However, if you look in Finder, you'll see that I have access to my Sony camera here. Of course, if you go into System Preferences, Privacy and Files and Folders, you will be able to allow it to detect removable drives again and your desktop folder and all this kind of cool stuff. Xcode works as usual. Let's check it out. Xcode will like to access files. Don't allow. <laughs> Is that going to work? Still seems to compile and run with no ill effects. Unreal Engine worked fine. Performance wise, it seemed to be pretty much just as fast as Mojave. Usually you expect slowdowns in beta builds, but I am excited for this uh, Mac OS Catalina, even though some applications that I love will need to be updated and I don't think they will because the developers, they probably had kids and moved on with their lives since making the applications. So just beware, you're going to be losing some applications, but you're going to be getting all the new iOS applications to your Mac very soon. So that is very exciting. And I do love the new privacy features, privacy and security features that are built in. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Check it out with me. All right, today we're installing the brand new Mac OS 1015 Beta Catalina. So at this point, you can select to install it on an external drive. However, I've made a partition called Beta using Disk Utility. And I've just added a particular volume called Beta. So I'm installing on that one to not affect my regular Mac OS. And interestingly enough, that is it for 32-bit applications. These ones in particular will not run any longer. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Installation's about half an hour, 
and you'll experience some cool restarts. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the progress of Progress Bars. All right, there we have it. We're here in the launch screen of Catalina. All right, this is the new service that is activated by T2. So even when a computer is offline, this will send via Bluetooth signals to mobile phones out there to broadcast your position in the world. Find my also protect your Mac with an activation lock, which prevents anyone else from using your Mac if it's lost or stolen. And we've got diagnostics and screen time. We get weekly reports, downtime, all that stuff. So all the stuff that's coming from iOS is going straight to the Mac. This looks fun. I like it. Your mail index has been damaged to repair it. Quit mail. All right, we're here. We've got a new applications icon. We've got Apple TV. We've got Find My, the new application. We've got music, no longer have iTunes anymore. And I guess let's just go through this beautiful operating system and see how well it runs. So let's go into system preferences. So we've got a new looking system preferences. Just gonna center it. And we have the Apple account on the top. So there's no longer that iCloud icon and you get your old view of your account. It's a bit slow. Looks It looks nicer than before. Something called family sharing, where I guess you can share all your iOS and Mac applications with your family. Right now, I'm not set up for this, so next. We can see new edition of something called Screen Time, and I'll tell you all the applications you've been using. So far, I've been using Finder, Setup Assistant, and this is cool, I like it, it's, it looks beautiful and slick. I'm hoping that this operating system will be a build up on Mojave. General, pretty much the same as Mojave. Pretty much looks the same. Hide and show the dock. Nope, pretty much the same as before. Mission control, I hate that option. Rearrange spaces. Um, group, Windows application, I love that option. Hot corners, you still got all that stuff. Using and groups. That looks pretty much the same. However, you can see uh, one of my applications, Jump Cut, doesn't support 64-bit, so it's been disabled. We've got accessibility. And my favorite section is trackpad option, enable dragging without drag log. So you still remain, maintain all these options that you had before. Security and privacy. Now this has been moved from the top right. It's moved all the way down here. And let's see, require password, fireball, privacy, anything new. So I want to disable that. Sorry, Apple. Advertising, that's nice. Automation, sc screen recording, full disk access. You need to allow applications for that. Allow accessibility, microphone, speech recognition. That's nice. Bluetooth, advanced. This one, I always disable this option because sometimes I leave my headphones on. And what that means is the Mac never goes to sleep. And even though I've packed it away in the bag, in the boot of the car, it'll be whirring the fans because there isn't enough airflow in it. So I have this one option disabled. But that's the same as before. That is system preferences, slight, slight changes. But let's see the new stuff, Apple TV. This guy has pretty much just ripped out the movie section from iTunes and you need to have an Apple TV account. Is that right? Let's see, is there any free shows? It looks nice, nice categories over here. The only thing I'd say is I can't find a free section, so this isn't the demonstration for you. Check out other people to find out what's going on, but pretty much they've ripped out iTunes and they've split into three different sections. So we've got Apple TV. Next up, let's listen to Apple Music. This is what iTunes now is. Welcome to Apple Music. You get to discover music for me and for the family. And what is this? I don't really want to try it out, to be honest. You get three months free for trying it out. And that's nice. So you do get free content with Apple Music. And you don't need to be a member. Tell you, oh, there, chaps. It's Tommy time. Yes, it's Tommy time. And what have I got for you today? I've got a showdown. Yes, that's right, a showdown. Showdown between the Mac. Interestingly enough, the touch bar's volume controls don't work. But yeah, you get supplemental content. Let's see, radio. Can you play back radio? No, you need to sign in to iTunes to listen to the radio. It's no longer free. 
and you get all the tracks that you normally listen to over here. And you still get that genius option in iTunes. Anything, we got podcasts. This is probably my favorite application because podcasts are free. Check it out, the future prime minister of Britain is on there. So, can you listen? Playback speed, so you can play at 2x speed. But it doesn't seem to have the option to automatically skip pauses. But I like it, it's beautiful. I might consider using this application to get my latest fix on Brexit. And this is the find my applications. Two applications become one, find my friends and find my iPhone. So you need to go to open security and privacy and location services, you need to enable that find my option. Done, done, find my is installed. And hopefully now it should work. There you go. It's, it thinks I'm over here, which is that accurate? That's pretty much it, I guess. What I wanna do now is, let's do some benchmarks. The results are pretty much close to normal speeds. So usually I get over 5,000 and usually I get around 22,000 on this computer. So we haven't lost that much performance, around 10% performance so far. But this is a beta build, so I can't judge it too much. Let's check out Activity Monitor, see what apps are destroying it. Interestingly enough, it's got an unknown sticker on the GPU, so it doesn't know what the UHD 630 that comes with the Intel CPU is, or the Vega 64, or the 555X. Just transferring some files off my NAS drive and speeds still look good. Speaking of that, let's try disk speed in the meantime. And we're getting good read and writes. Whoa. 2.8 megabytes a second. There you go. Microsoft Word still is usable. So interestingly, when you launch Photoshop now, it needs to ask for permission to access files on your desktop folder. I think this is a really good feature to have. So if you don't allow it, still launch the file. I'm not sure what happened there, but you can deny access to Photoshop from scanning your hard drive in the background. That's a cool feature. Final Cut Pro would last access your desktop don't allow again so locate you can still access it even when you hit deny that is interesting let's check it out xcode would like to access files don't allow <laughs> is that gonna work uh, ipad pro play Still seems to compile and run with no ill effects. Xcode works as usual. Power Gadget, Intel Power Gadget, that one crashes right away. You can't use that. Logic Pro X seems to be working the same. Unreal Engine launching fine. So other interesting items, there's this new menu button. It looks like an eject, so I'm hoping that they'll build this out so you can automatically eject your USB drives when you plug in your iOS device as iTunes is now integrated into the system. Maybe it will appear here. And in case you're wondering, I've connected my Mac to an eGPU and eGPU support seems to be alive and well. All right, are you guys excited about this Mac OS? Catalina, I know I am. Catalina, I.